It's Monday morning and I'm just about to put my card in for the week. I've got all my stuff in, ready to spend the week out in the truck. I've got a bit of a different job today. I've got a hook up to the blower trailer, but we're doing a stock transfer and it's on turnaround. So I'm going to be very, very local, unlike last week. The first thing I do is put all my personal items into the truck. My freshly washed bedding, my clothes, enough water to last me the week, and I put all my food into the fridge. And I restock my tea bags. As you know, having a cup of tea is one of my most important morning rituals. Then I'm ready to start work, so I put my card in and confirm that I have been on rest all weekend. When I got in, I've also got a retalk tag, so when I come back in a minute, I'll get the wheel retalked. Let's go and drop my trailer. I wind the legs down. Remove my number plate from the trailer. I take all my Susie's off and the hydraulic pipe. And then I undo the safety clip and pull the pin out. So, pull forward slightly. Put the air down. Pull away. I give my wheels a quick wash as there was a massive queue for the wash on Friday. I knew I'd be around the yard today to give it a quick once over. I'm just going to now go and find the blower trailer, which I think is down there. That looks like it's dropped very low, so I might struggle with this. A little bit. I'm putting the air right down. I always get out and give it a little check just to make sure the height is right and just in case I've missed something that I should have seen. I am clear, but has been dropped very low. Then I give two pulls forwards just to make sure it's definitely in. The first thing I do is put the safety clip on the kingpin. My arms are only just long enough to do this. Then I screw on the hydraulic pipe and plug in all my Susie's. Whoever had this trailer last left a big dollop of fifth wheel grease on the hydraulic connection. And now it is all over my gloves. Then I can wind the legs up and stow the winder upper away. And last but not least, I can put my number plate on. Now that I'm hitched up, I can start my daily checks. And even though I've been walking around the trailer as I've been hitching up and looking out for any big reasons as to why I shouldn't take the trailer before it's fully hitched up, this is my final big check around the trailer and the truck itself. Luckily for me, everything seems in order this morning. I think somebody's got lost this morning and ended up in the wrong yard. I've now completed all of my daily checks. I've hitched up to the trailer and now it's down to the mill in Uffcombe to go and pick up this feed and bring it back to our store at Wayne's Transport. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so it's out of the yard and down the lane and onto the M5 northbound where I only need to go down one junction. Then through the village of Uffcombe, which is quite narrow and has one particularly nasty bend, which isn't too bad as long as you don't meet any traffic coming the other way. And this time I'm in luck. I pull into the mill where I have to drive right forwards and then back onto the Weybridge, where I will hand over my collection ticket. I'm given some sample bags, so I just need to park up down the bottom and wait for them to load me. This is a popular place for the local ducks and no matter how many times they're shooed out, they always come back. So now I need to go in the left hand side, which is actually the worst side. <laughs> it's the tightest side. The fact that they have put the metal mesh up through the tunnel has made it even tighter. I'm not really sure why they have put it up, but I'm guessing it's to deter birds. The, the chap on the left of the screen will tell me when to stop any second now. Yeah. Now I just have to wait for his instructions as he loads me out the bins. This will keep going on and on until I am fully loaded. So now I need to back into the other side um, so that he can take a sample. 
This is not the easiest reverse as it's half blindsided and it's quite a small space but it is doable if you take your time. I've now got my sample and I go back onto the Weybridge to collect my Weybridge ticket. As you can see in my little window, they are small little pellets. And once I've got my ticket, it's back to Wayne's Transport. But first that bad bend and I'm not quite so lucky this time. Although with a bit of manoeuvring and cooperation, we can all get on our way pretty quickly. As I come down the slip road onto the M5, one of Stuart Harvey's pulls across to let me out. These trucks always look great coming down the road, so it's been a nice treat for a Monday morning. Then it's back down the lane and into the yard. This journey takes around 20 to 25 minutes. I thought the yard would be empty when I got back, but I was wrong. The curtain cider is being loaded and Nick has a product that was supposed to go into a local mill, but they don't have space for it, even though they ordered it. It's everything here. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to find out what's going on. Once the curtain cider is loaded and out the way, I can back round to outside the store that I'm blowing into. Well, I can see what they want me to do. I think it would be better to do it a different way, but we're just going to go with it and just see how it goes. I go to get the trailer set up, ready for blowing, but for some reason I can't move the lever to make sure I'm blowing out of the same side that the shed is on. Nick sees me struggling, so while I go and open the internal doors, he goes to get me some grease. And he even helps me out by sorting it out for me. Happy? <laughs> yeah. Then Yabo gets a fault lift, I move back a little bit so that I'm in the correct position. And we set up all the pipes and tie them to the fault lift because we want to blow the product over the wall. It's a bit of trial and error to get in the right position, but I know that the pipes need to be tied on really tight. If it is not, once I start blowing, the pipes could flail around everywhere. And we want to have some control of where the product lands in the store. It takes us a little while to get it all set up, but once we do, we secure it really tight. And then it's time to start blowing to see if our plan works. And so far so good, but we still have 26 tonnes to blow off, which will take around two hours. As the pile gets bigger, we realise that we need to angle the pipe more up in the air. Looking at the windows on the trailer, I start to see a little bit of progress. With that, another truck comes in with the same product. Up until today, all of this product had been tipped by a normal bulker. But as the store is quite full now, we need to start filling the space more efficiently. And finally, my trailer is empty, so I turn everything back to the start position. And turn that horrible noisy donkey engine off. Yeah, if I leave that here, yeah, the pipes, and then if I need them later, then they're out ready, aren't they? Oh, you've got to take that one off as well. It's nice getting someone to do something for you, isn't it? I'm taking with me, I think. I'll take I'll take I'll stick that one in the side locker just so I don't lose it. Right, I'll be out of the way. That's the first load done and now I'm off to get the second load. I've got hopefully four loads to do today. So I'm hoping to get back there and get loaded up as quick as I did last time. I fill out my paperwork quickly for my next load. And I also remember that I need a retalk. I filled out my retalk tag and it is for Offside. I get out and take off all my nut covers while I'm waiting. <laughs> I think I should come back to the yard more often. Everyone seems to be helping me today. Gemma's been there. Where's that? Gemma, I Marine Laboratory Park. Oh god, you went there in that? And then they leave me to put my nut covers back all on my own. How am I going to cope? Especially when I've got used to people helping me in the last couple of hours. And then there's no time to hang about. It's back to the mill at Uffcombe. Back around the roundabout and down the slip road, heading north one junction on the M5. Just off of the motorway roundabout at Tiverton, there is a garden centre where my mum and dad like to go and have lunch occasionally, now that they're retired. This time I'm not so lucky on the corner down to the mill and it can be quite frustrating sometimes when car drivers don't understand how much room you need to manoeuvre around a corner. But to be fair, I haven't got the worst job. There's an Arctic behind me as well. And as the cars get impatient with me, they're only moving themselves in the way of the Arctic behind me. It's one of those occasions where you need to look really calm on the outside even though you are raging inside. 
With a little patience, I get through and it's down to the mill. There's one of ours on the Weybridge already and he is getting ready to be sampled, taking product into the mill. And that's that Arctic Curtain Cider that was behind me just about coming through and he's got a Moffat on the back. I get myself weighed in and I'm instructed to weight down the bottom. When I get down there, I find Mummy Duck giving her ducklings a swimming lesson in some shallow water. I'm all weighed in and the chap's told me to just wait here until he comes down as he doesn't know which side it's coming out of this time, whether it's going to be the same side or a different side. So I'm hoping it's going to be the better side. There's also one of ours tipping on the organic pit there. And one of ours round on the front pit. This time I'm called through on the right hand side, which is the better side. Pete in the truck to the left hand side of the screen told me that his son watches my videos and he's got a birthday coming up. So happy birthday. This tunnel is so much easier to get through and I'm instructed back and forwards whilst loading like I was before. The reason we are taking the product out of here and putting it into our store is because the company that is leasing the mill at the moment is ceasing their contract at the end of August. They don't want to let their existing customers down, so they felt their best option was to store one of their most popular products in our store. That way they are safeguarding themselves for the transition. I do, perfect, thank you very much. The new company, Lease in the Mill, is also an animal feed company and are going to be using it as a dedicated organic mill. Right, that's that. Paperwork and sample present. And I can take this back to Wayne's store. See if Yabo's any happier with all this going in the store. It's stressing him out. <laughs> While I was on the Weybridge, they told me that they didn't know if they were going to have another load ready today and if they did, it would be later in the afternoon. But for now, we'll take this load back and work it out from there. Once again, I meet traffic on this corner. The drivers that work for the mill at the moment are quite glad they won't have to come down to the Ufkin mill again. Although I have spoke to some drivers that work for the mill that are taken over and they are not looking forward to having to go down to that mill. It doesn't take too long and we're back to the yard already. Once again, I thought I was going to have a clear run through the yard, but there was one of ours in here doing a clear up load of wood pellets out of the other store. A clear up load is exactly what it says it is, and it's basically the last load out of the shed. I park up out of the way, and then I go and see Yabo to find out what he wants me to do. Wayne's have two storage units available for long or short term storage. This time Yabo wants me to back up into a similar position, but this time he has a better idea that I may have planted a seed for earlier. Once again, I get myself all set up in position and I make sure that everything is ready to blow. So Yabo's new idea is to strap the pipes to the end of the handler and to boom it right into the shed. This means nearly using all my pipes. To me, this is looking and feeling a lot better. We have a little discussion and we decide to use my last remaining pipe and push the handler further into the shed. This setup doesn't actually take too long at all, and then we can start blowing. So I open my internal doors and start the donkey engine up. I put the revs up, close the air valve, start the feeder, and then increase the air. I think you'll agree that this is a much better way of doing it. And then I tip the body up to about two rams. This is definitely a better way to make sure that all the product is going into the shed and not drifting outside like it would with a normal tailboard tip. Once again, this will take about two hours to tip. Because I am not blown into a bin, it's less likely to block up. Once the trailer's empty, I can turn all the dials to the off position. And because of the conversation that I had with the Weybridge at Ufcombe, I pack everything away as it sounded very unlikely that they'd have a load for me today. The good thing about loading into this shed rather than unloading onto a farm is that my pipes stay a lot cleaner and therefore I stay a lot cleaner too. I will need to go and find Yabo in a minute to take the handler down because I don't know the code for it. I think Yabo is going to be impressed when he sees a pile in the store as it looks really neat and it's a job well done. It's Yabo's birthday today, he's just given me a bit of birthday cake. Yabo brings a boom in and we can unstrap that last pipe. Yabo seems to have strapped the pipe on so well, it's actually quite hard to get it off. 
Once that's done, I can lower the body on my trailer and put everything away. I also make sure that my internal doors are shut and then I go and see Keith in the office to find out what I'm doing next. And this is a new Merc that will be on the road soon. There is a few bits still to do on it, but it's almost ready to go. After talking to Keith, there is some good news. He has got some work for me and I don't have to unhitch the blower. The bad news is that I have to go back to that same mill to pick up a load of feed as now they have decided that they do have a load ready for us. So it's back down the lane and onto the M5, down one junction, and back down to Ufcombe. I'm hoping that this time, when I get down to the village, I won't meet anything on that corner. And this time, I'm really lucky. This is a regular bus route, so it's not uncommon to meet a bus on that corner. Once again, I reverse back onto the Weybridge, and I'm told where to go and wait. So well, this time I am out of luck because I have to go in the left-hand side, the tight side. Because I will struggle to open my door once I'm in there because of how tight it is, I take off my sheet now. This trailer does have an electric sheet and it used to have a remote, but for some reason it has gone missing. I'm loaded up in no time and then I've got to pull forwards and back into the other side so the chap can take a sample. The bag has opened on my bed. Not what you need not what you need and then it's back on the weighbridge to weigh out got my paperwork got my sample so it's back to wayne's transport although i was originally booked in for four loads today i think i will only be able to do three as they are adamant that there won't be enough product made today for a full load once again i got round that corner no problem and as i'm on my way out of the village i see harvey taking the raw materials down to the mill to be made into feed and then it's back on the M5 southbound and back to the yard. And this time the yard is free too and I don't have to wait for anybody. I back up to the same position as before as last time worked really well and we're going to do the same sort of thing this time. It's just a shame that I packed all my pipes away before I knew that I had to go back for another load. So here we are setting up just as before. The only difference with this load compared to the last load is we've repositioned the handler so it is blowing into the corner. Neil comes back to change one of his lights on his trailer and before we know it we've got just under 5 tonne of product left on the trailer. And that's it, the trailer's empty on the third load. But just before I pack away, I go up to the office and just check that there hasn't been a miscommunication and there is actually a fourth load. But they ring the company and confirm that I don't need to go back, so I do pack everything away. Yabo comes out to help me pack away, and all in all, today has been a good day. I've had help from quite a few people, and I've even had two cups of coffee made for me. I think I should be around the yard more often. I won't need the blower trailer for the work I have set me for tomorrow, so I find a space up the yard in the trailer lineup. Well, I'm quite glad that's over because it's not the best job in the world to do. However, today hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. I take my number plate off. I wind down my legs. I unplug all my Susie's and unscrew my hydraulic pipe. And then remove the clip and pull the kingpin. Then I pull forwards a little bit, drop the air on the back, and then I can pull away. I find my trailer up the yard that I dropped this morning, and although you can't see it, it is definitely behind me. As always, I get out to check the fifth wheel height, and then I can reverse back onto the trailer. I do up the clip, I connect the hydraulic pipe, and all the Susies. I've pumped the brake to reduce the air, but the red line on this one always seems to be a little bit stubborn. But it will go on. Then I wind the legs up, I've never realised this until I watched the video back this time, but it looks like I'm rowing a boat. Then I put my number plate back on in the foliage. And we're done. 
As I said earlier, there was a massive queue for the wash on Friday, but I knew I was going to be back today, so I decided to leave it and wash today instead. We have one wash for 20 drivers, and we all come back on a Friday, so sometimes it's quite difficult to get on the wash if we all come back at the same time. And after about an hour and a half, she's clean. It is such a good feeling to have a clean truck, especially the next day when you're driving down the road and you know that she's sparkly and it's going to be sunny tomorrow as well. So I am very, very pleased. I've just done a print out for today. I thought that I know what hours I've done and I've done everything right. So <laughs> my drive time today, because I've been so local, two hours, 40 minutes. I don't actually think I've done that little drive-in since I was stuck on Nash Road in Manchester for 24 hours. The good news is so I've stayed under a 13 hour day, which is great. I'm gonna have 11 off tonight and go and, actually, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm going to check. Okay, so I've just checked what I'm doing tomorrow. I have a farm in Langport where I'm picking up beans and taking it to Holsworthy, which is fine. But then, after that, I have a quarry. A very dirty quarry and I've just cleaned my truck and I got really excited and now it's probably all gonna be ruined it's nearly seven o'clock so I make that tea time and I have a lovely salad again that I'm gonna flick everywhere not on purpose <laughs> 